Okay. Hi, Dr. Janet. How are you? Hi, Douglas. How are you doing? Oh, doing well. Thank you. Thank you for coming on the show. I appreciate it. Thank you for having me. I got a, I got a kick of all the letters after your name. And <laughs> I know. can I try to guess what they are? Because I, I only know, I don't know them all. Um, Please do. Okay, PhD, <laughs> PhD I know. Okay, yes. the next one is RDN. Is that registered mm -hmm. dietitian and nutritionist? Very good. Okay, FAND. Uh, give me a clue. What's the F? Fellow. Fellow. Yes. Give me the A. <laughs> Academy. Okay, I don't know this one. Okay, what is that one? <laughs> Fellow of the Academy of Nutrition and Dietetics. It, okay, <laughs> and then we have CSSD. Uh, give me what's the C? Certified. <laughs> Certified specialist. Is that one of the good? Ones? Is that the first S or the second S? That's the first S. Okay. Certified specialist. Scientific diet or mm -hmm. no? No. <laughs> Sports. Sports. Sports and dietitian. Sports dietitian. Sports correct. dietitian. Oh, okay. Sports dietetics. All right. Well, I'm glad we sorted that out because uh, wait, there's more. There are. Really? There's LDN. Guess what that is? Oh, that's not even on here. Um, uh, well, it's on the it's on the book. <laughs> LDN, licensed dietitian yeah. and nutritionist. Very good. Okay. <laughs> yes, a lot of letters. Overkill. <laughs> well, it's very uh, it's very commendable and. Uh, <laughs> How long did it take you to uh, acquire all of those letters? Uh, a lifetime. Mm. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. yeah, a lot of school, but I love learning. And um, so it was labor of love. Well, I'm glad you're on the show because I've had a couple of other people who do similar work that you do. Mm -hmm. And once you see the show, you'll notice that I am uh, somewhat overweight. And I have been struggling with my weight for many, many years. So mm. any advice I get from people, because every diet I've ever tried has failed. Um, and the biggest problem that I have with dieting is my temperament. I get so angry when I'm on a diet that I become, well, according to my, uh, to my wife, I get <laughs> impossible to be around and I give up. You know, mm -hmm. and very I, common. Yeah, and I just don't. I don't know what to do. So I want to go through a couple of your talking points, but you're also promoting your book. Are you necessarily teaching people weight loss or just general overall health? Well, I want to say that you are not alone. That we have an epidemic of overweight and obesity in this country, which. Uh, puts uh, so many of us at risk for health problems. So, and losing weight, as we all know, as you know, is very difficult. So, um, one of the reasons that I wrote this book is because uh, I've, I've worked with uh, people trying to lose weight in, in my whole life. And um, this concept uh, came along uh, in, basically in December of uh, 2019, before the pandemic, uh, an article came out in the New England Journal of Medicine that um, yeah, I actually have it here because I'm a scientist and I'm, and I'm fascinated, of course, with nutrition and weight loss and all that kind of stuff. And um, this article came out uh, in the New England Journal of Medicine called the effects of intermittent fasting on health, aging, and disease. And I was fascinated because it talked about the benefits of intermittent fasting, which is different from uh, these long-term fasts or cleanses that people have done. This is short-term uh, fasting on a daily basis of, you know, a maximum of a minimum of 12 to a maximum of 36 hours. And so by doing that on a regular basis, it's not really a diet, it's it's an eating pattern and uh, it's 
very, very, it's been um, shown scientifically to help people in so many ways. Uh, one, of course, is with weight loss, but they're finding out that the benefits of this, this short-term fasting goes over more, not only just promoting weight loss, but also uh, promoting health, like um, lowering uh, blood sugar levels, uh, helping diabetics by increasing insulin sensitivity, um, all kinds of things, promoting uh, longevity, which is really exciting, and uh, just a whole host of amazing uh, health benefits simply from changing your pattern of eating. So I, I'm finding that people um, think of this not so much as a diet, but as a lifestyle and people that are used to going on these highly restrictive um, diets are loving this concept of intermittent fasting because it's different. It's different from uh, traditional calorie controlled diets where you cut out everything you love. Here you just um, plan your uh, time of eating and uh, then you can basically not count calories, which people also love, and yet uh, and you, uh, it promotes weight loss if, the magic if, uh, if on the, during your eating windows you don't go absolutely nuts you know, on a junk food fast. You want to eat healthy. And I think that that's where my book um, is different from other intermittent fasting programs. Uh, that are out there on the internet because I, as a nutritionist and a, I specialize in heart health, um, I promote combining your pattern of eating, which is your intermittent fast of choice, with super healthy Mediterranean plant-based uh, whole foods eating, which is how all of us should be eating for health and longevity. So the intermittent fasting, um... You're talking about 12 hours where you just eat nothing? Well, during your fasting period, you uh, have no, you eat nothing that contains calories. So that would be um, beverage. You can drink water, you can drink, uh, which I recommend highly, black coffee or tea, um, you know, gum and things of that nature. So that's during your fast. So that's, that's, I guess, the hard part because uh, with uh, when you first start out with intermittent fasting, um, you need to your your body ha learns to adjust to that period of time where you're hungry. I mean, you're going to be hungry because this is uh, certainly different than your the traditional pattern of eating. So, but that hunger dissipates with time, and you kind of your body gets used to it. It's really an amazing thing. I started trying this myself because I always, um, before I recommend anything to my patients, I um, try it myself. And in the beginning, it actually worked out kind of nicely with the pandemic because uh, I decided, you know, in the beginning of the pandemic, it was so stressful and so horrible, still is, but um, I overate, and drank too much wine and, you know, like everyone else, stressed out being home. And then I decided to make lemonade out of lemons and I decided to try this in intermittent fasting and uh, it's it's amazing. So um, back to your question of uh, how long do you fast? That's that's an excellent question. Uh, so what my book does, I went, I decided to write about the uh, top five types of intermittent fasting that are popular now on the internet. And so I wrote about each of them. So there's different ways to approach this. And so I think the uh, easiest one, the probably the uh, most famous one is your uh, the 18-6 plan, which is where, uh, or I'm sorry, the 16-8 method. And that's where you're fasting for 16 hours and you have an eight hour eating window. And so uh, I think people find that one the easiest, the eating window plan is what I call it. The easiest one to start out doing because we almost do that. So basically if you kind of uh, don't eat after, you know, a certain period of time at night and then kind of delay your breakfast, you can, you can manage to do that those 16 hours and just combine your eating into that eight hour window. So I assume that the 16 hour 
block, uh, half of that is your sleep time, correct? Yeah, so that makes it easier and hopefully people are not getting up and eating in the middle of the night because that's a, not a good habit. Um, so if you can just keep that fast without eating calories, then all of these magical things happen in your body physiologically during the fasting period that are conducive not only to weight and but body fat loss, especially around the middle, uh, that, that stubborn belly fat, which is very, very dangerous for your health. Um, so uh, that's another wonderful side effect of uh, intermittent fasting. And I also recommend that almost taking a three-pronged approach because this is a lifestyle that can actually, if uh, you're healthy and uh, your your uh, physician uh, okay's you you following this kind of an eating pattern, uh, because there are certain people that that cannot go on this uh, type of of the eating plan. Uh, so if your doctor uh, okays it and you stick to a, a, a program of intermittent fasting and you combine that with a, a plant-based a Mediterranean uh, style of eating and also exercise, that's a three-pronged approach to uh, what I would consider um, taking the best care of your body that you possibly can and promoting uh, good health and longevity. Is there one particular food, if you had to pick one, that somebody who is trying to lose weight just should cut out altogether? Which one would it be? Well, I would rather talk about what to add in. <laughs> and that food would be coffee. I am a huge fan of coffee uh, because coffee, uh, black coffee I'm talking about, uh, or, or tea, green tea or, or black tea without additives is one of the best things that you could eat for longevity and for good health. So um, I, I refer to coffee as all the time as plant juice and anything that comes from most foods that come from plants uh, are going to give you all those powerful antioxidants that are good for uh, slowing aging and preventing and treating disease and fighting off all those dangerous free radicals that cause um, that cause disease and shorten our lives. I think people might argue with you that coffee is not actually eating anything. They would, uh, <laughs> it helps you to not eat anything. It's true because there's no calories in black coffee. Yeah, zero calories. We like that zero calorie thing, but it also is very helpful in terms of, uh, of promoting good health, which I think a lot of people don't know. I'm talking black coffee. And, don't ruin a perfectly good superfood with uh, uh, bad fats, cream, and and refined sugar. Okay, what about uh, the like sweet and lows and the, the fake sugars? Are those all right? Yes, those are. Uh, I'm a big uh, advocate for uh, any way that you can cut out refined sugar uh, or simple sugar is or added sugar. You know that's made the new uh, the blacklist for the American Heart Association. That simple sugar that we uh, consume when we eat sweets and when we drink uh, regular soda is uh, causes disease and uh, overweight and obesity. So uh, any way that you can cut way back on your intake of simple sugar is fine in my book. And one of those ways, which I actually practice myself, is I uh, use, um, you know, uh, stevia or Splenda uh, to get that sweet taste without the um, adding any um, refined uh, simple sugar. So I think it's great. And there's a study that showed that it does not, uh, they do not raise your insulin level, which uh, is another a question that that uh, has to do with intermittent fasting. You want to, uh, during your fasting period, not raise that insulin level. You want to keep that low. We, we do have to kind of wrap this up. Your book is called Intermittent Fasting. Can you hold it up again? Sure. There you go. <laughs> Great. And it's by Dr. Janet Bond Brill mm -hmm. with many, many letters. And <laughs> lots of letters. Lots of letters. <laughs> <laughs> Lots of brain cells now. <laughs> how, how long has your book been out? It, it just came out a couple of months ago. Uh, so it's 
relatively new. It came out, I think, the end of November. Okay. How's it doing? It's doing really well, uh, you know, for um, a new a new book. Um, it's, I think, popular because it's New Year, and I think uh, people are into that New Year, New You concept, which is wonderful. And also, I think, which is a, a point that I wanted to make, that this has been 2020 was such a horrific year, but now we see some kind of hope uh, on the horizon and with vaccines. And so I think uh, people need to um, focus on themselves and get healthier and make this a much better year. I certainly hope so. I, it couldn't get much worse than 2020, I don't think. No, it, it couldn't. So. Um, so let's focus on ourselves and, and staying healthy and moving past this horrific uh, time in our lives. Do you have a website you want to give out? I do. It's drjanet.com, D-R-J-A-N-E-T.com. Great. Thank you so much for coming on the show. And